Okay, this is section 2.1, and it's on composition of functions. And composition of function just means substituting one function in for another. On this example, it gives you a function uh, f of x, and that's how you read this, f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. And here is a function g of x equals 2x minus 5. And what they say to do is find f of g of x, and that's the way you read this. And you can also write this as f of g of x. Just like this is read g of x, this is read f of g of x. Now, g of x means put something in for x, and you'll get out what something is on the other side of the equation for the dependent variable. f of g of x means, well, it means put the entire function, g of x, in for f. Well, let's do that. The entire function g of x in this example is 2x minus 5. So I'll have to substitute the 2x minus 5 and for the x on the f function because it says f of g of x. That mean, Like f of 2 would mean put 2 in for x. f of 3 means put 3 in for x. So f of g of x means put this g of x function right here in for x. If I do that, it will be 2 times 2x minus 5 squared minus 3 times 2x minus 5 plus 4. And then at that point, if it says to simplify it, you could either simplify it by hand by formulating it together and combining like terms, or you could go to the quad sheet and scroll down to the bottom where you can put in polynomials of that form and put in your coefficients, and it will simplify it for you right here and get 8x squared minus 46x plus 69. Now, if you composite this function the opposite way and do g of f of x, well, that means put the f of x function into the g function. So I'd need to put this right over here for x. So it will be 2 times that stuff the 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, close parentheses, minus 5. And that's what we did right here. 2 times that stuff, because I'm putting all this and for the x, so it's 2 times this stuff, minus 5. And then this you just finish off by hand. Take the 2 through, then subtract off the 5, and we got it simplified. We'll do a real-life example next here. Okay, on this example, it says the number of bacteria in a refrigerated food product is given by the quadratic function n of capital T equals 3 t squared plus 7 t plus 100, where n is the number of bacteria per cubic centimeter uh, of food in units of thousands. So it's the number of uh, bacteria in units of thousands. That's what n stands for. And capital T, it's unusual for us to use capital T because usually we use little t for time. And it, so we, we're using capital T here for temperature. Okay, so this is a function that gives me the number of bacteria in terms of the temperature. And down here I have a function, capital T of little t. Well, this gives me the temperature, capital T, in terms of the time, little t, that the food has been left out of the refrigerator in units of hours. So it says composite these functions together. So basically what we have here is capital T equals this, and N equals this thing with capital T. So if capital T equals this, we just substitute the 2 little t plus 5 everywhere there's a t here. If we would do that, we would get 3 times 2t plus 5, that gets squared, you can see that right here, plus 7 times whatever capital T is, which is 2t plus 5, then plus 100. And at this point, we're back to where we were a little bit ago with simplifying this uh, expression right here. And again, you could simplify it by hand, or you could use the poly sheet. And on the poly sheet, my coefficients are right here typed in. This is at the bottom of the poly sheet. And it foils it and simplifies it for you to get 12x squared plus 74x plus 210. And that's what it, we have right here. Now, the extra parts of this was to find out uh, the number of bacteria when the food was first removed and, and other things that deal, deal with this quadratic equation. So what I did is I took these coefficients for this quadratic equation, and I took them and I... Uh, type them into the quadratic sheet. So here on the quadratic sheet, I typed in my coefficients, which are 12, 74, and 210. Now, this equation here, y equals this, is like n equals this, where the x is the time, and over here is the number of, uh, of bacteria. So if I want to find the bacteria at the start at t equals 0, I would just put 0 in for x. And that's what one of the problems said to do, and there was 210,000 bacteria then at the start. If I want to find out when the number of bacteria was 400,000, which is what the next part of the question said, then just put the 400, don't type 400,000, but 400 because it's in units of thousands, that's why. So just type in 400 here, and you get two answers, and one of them makes sense. The number of bacteria was uh, 400,000, 1.95 hours after it was out of the refrigerator, or this would mean 8.11 hours before you took it out of the refrigerator. And the last part of this problem says, uh, what is the minimum amount of bacteria? Well, here's the minimum amount of bacteria right here, 95.91, and that would be 1,000. And that occurred 3.08 hours before you took it out of the refrigerator, according to this.
this model. So we'll take a look at another example. Okay, on this example it says a rock is tossed into a pond causing a circular ripple. The radius of the ripple is increasing at a rate of 0.5 meters per second. Write the area of the circle as a function of time and find the area of the circle made by the ripple at 3 seconds and 5 seconds. And it gives you the area of a circle is pi r squared where r is the radius and pi is about this right here. So anyway, the rate uh, in which this thing is uh, spreading out, this ripple from this rock, is 0.05 meters per second. And here's 0.05 times the amount of time. So the radius r is a function of time. r of t is equal to 0.5t, where t is the amount of time, and the 0.5 comes from right there. Now the area of a circle is a of r, and we were given the formula right here, pi r squared. So if r equals 0.5t and a equals pi r squared, just substitute the 0.5t right in there for r, and we're compositing the functions together. And we would say, well, that's a of r of t, is equal to pi times what's r? 0.5t, and that would get squared, 0.5t squared. So we could go ahead and square this, and that would be pi times 0.5 squared is 0.25, and the t would also get squared. And generally, people put the coefficient, the number first, so it would be 0.25 pi t squared. And then we would just substitute in, uh, and we could write a function notation like this, but we could uh, substitute in what is the area in 3 seconds by doing a of 3 and in 5 seconds by doing a of 5, just substituting in 3 and 5 in for t. But this is really a quadratic equation. So we could type this coefficient, 0.25 pi, into the Excel sheet on the quadratic sheet. And so my a would be, I uh, will type in equals because it's more than just 0.25. It's 0.25 times pi. And the way you can type pi on Excel is pi, open parentheses, close parentheses. And when I hit enter, then that's what 0.25 times pi is with a lot of accuracy. And then I can put in my zeros for my uh, linear and my constant term because it was just 0.25 pi t squared. There was no linear and constant term. And then I can put in for x3 and get what the area is in 3 seconds and put in 5 and get what the area is in 5 seconds, and we can check that, and those are correct. We'll do one more problem. Okay, on this problem, a patient is prescribed a medication that is injected directly into the bloodstream. The half-life of the medication is 8 hours. In other words, there will only be half amount of the medication left in the bloodstream in 8 hours. And also, at every, every 8 hours, the patient receives another injection of the same amount of medication. It says, represent this with a composition of function. Well, the dose is not told to us, so we'll refer to the dose as being 100, as in 100% of the dose. So let's make a table here. At the first injection, they get 100% of the dose, and after 8 hours, they're down to 50. But right at the end of that, when they get down to 50, after that 8 hours, they get another dose, which boosts them up to 150. And after 8 hours, that gets cut in half because of the half-life. It gets, gets, goes down. It lose, you get it out of your bloodstream, so it goes down to half the amount, 75. And then they get another injection, brings them up to 175. Then half of that's 87.5, get another injection, and so on. Now, how do we represent this with a composition of function? Well, the amount that's uh, in your bloodstream right here at this point can be represented with the function 0.5x plus 100. So at the very start, we could say f of 0, put 0 into this function, and we get f of 0 equals 0.5. The 0.5 came from the half-life idea. So 0.5 times 0, 0, 0 plus 100 is 100. Now, put that 100 back into this function. f of 100 is 0.5 times 100, which is 50, plus 100 is 150, and that tells me how much after two injections. Put the 150 back into the function, and you'll get the amount that you end up with after three injections, because half of 150 is 75, plus the 100 makes 175. So you just keep on plugging your answer back into itself, and that's called recursion. Now, we could write this as a composition of function as, for example, f of f of x. f of f of x means put the f of x function back into itself. So it would be 0 0.05 times x. What is x? Well, 0 0.05 x plus 100. You can see me writing this here. 0 0.05 times what's x? Well, itself. 0 0.05 x plus 100. Then finish it off. Plus 100. Pretty confusing. This is the first time that uh, you've maybe ever seen anything like this before. Again, it's recursion, substituting this thing back into itself. And if we evaluate it, we'll get 150. The easier way to do it is just keep on substituting your answer for the function back into itself. And that's how uh, we would do that problem, and that's pretty much it with that section.